Hi, welcome to Lazeal's Art. I'm Lazeal, and today we'll be talking about stick figures, how to transform them, and make them more proportionately or atomically correct. Again, thank you for watching, and let's get creative. All right, stick figure into real person. So um, I divided this up so that when I start explaining how to turn the stick figure into a real person, you can kind of see what the proportions are gonna be. So first, let's start with our stick figure, okay? So we have to fill this entire space from top to bottom, okay? Pretty easy. And then, ha 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 ha, there's my stick figure. Okay, now, oops, I, I broke my own rule. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn this into basic shapes. That way, anybody can turn a stick figure into something a little bit more schnazzy. Now, we can do circles, okay? We can do rectangles. Notice how I'm already doing the torso to here. So this, this middle line, this midline is the waist, okay? And then, Another rectangle and another rectangle. And guess what? The arms can be rectangles. And if we want to go so far as to do hands, they can just be little rounded, rounded nubs. Okay. Ta-da! He's even happier now. Okay? Now, you can become more complex with your shapes. So, again, circle. We can start defining different types of bodies with different shapes for this rectangle. So instead of a just a rectangle, we can do an hourglass, which is more like a female shape. Or we can do more of a trapezoid, which is more of a built male figure. And then, of course, again, the midline is the waist. And we can put a foot right here, maybe a foot right here, so he's standing sideways. Just like that. We're gonna give him, this is his shoulder. Maybe he has a little bend in his elbow. And then, of course, just different shapes to the arms, okay? Ooh, he's blown away. He's, he's transforming. Okay, <clears throat> now, so we have this basic stick figure. Okay, cool, we can make it stand there, but how can we make it do other things? So if we have a stick figure People like to draw them walking like this. All we have to do is translate that into this. We do that by doing our circle, doing our rectangle to the waistline. We do our rectangle here because we know that this is a portion of the leg which is still gonna be rectangular. And this is another portion of a rectangle. And then this is just coming straight down. What we can do is add feet like that. And then we've got one arm coming back, which of course is the opposite arm as the leg. So again, we can just do our rectangles rectangle and already we are more dynamic than we were before now if that's too basic for you we can step it up a notch now here's the thing if you really want to get good at human bodies i suggest you really study the anatomy of a person, their skeletal structure, their muscles, the way they move, where the muscles begin and end. Okay, that way 
you can draw a very accurate human just by knowing what the muscle structure looks like. All right, so moving on to a little bit more complex way to draw the human is midline is our waistline. Okay, notice how this is about halfway. Our, from our head to our waist should be the same as our waist to the bottom of our feet. Now, that also means that our hips are below this line, our waistline, okay? I will be drawing circles for our joints because that's kind of what joints act like. They act like a ball and socket, okay? So here's our circle. This is what we're starting with our stick figure. We're gonna go down. I'm gonna then at the waistline with that in mind, this is where his legs go out. And then I'm just gonna have his arms going down. Now, jazzing it up, we're going to go ahead and do our trapezoidal torso. Okay, we have our waistline. Then I'm going to start drawing the joints. So we have one hip and the second hip. Okay, yes, that kind of looks like a butt. Then we need the knee, which is going to be halfway between the hip, not the waist, the hip and the ground. Okay, so we have our knee right here and our knee right here. We're gonna go ahead and just draw a simple foot, which is just a rounded semicircle. Now, our shoulders are on the end of our torso. Our uh, elbows come halfway between the top and bottom of our torso. You can even try and stand up right now and measure that out. And this is all just theoretical measurements. Yes, there are some people with longer arms. Yes, there are some people with longer torsos, shorter legs, but that's all the stuff that you can experiment with once you learn these basics. The wrist is at the waistline and then the hand just hangs over. We then now are gonna play a little game of connect the dots and just piece our man together. Now, if I were to erase the insides of this, he already looks more dynamic than just our shape, guys. Okay. And then this is where you can be like, oh, yes, he has a shirt on. Ta da! And then the shirt goes like this, and then these are his jeans, so he has pockets. Okay. Things like that. Maybe he has some sort of tennis shoe on. Do do do. Do do do. Okay, perfect. Now, how do we change it into something that moves? Let's do a female shape. Let's do the typical sass stance. So in a stick figure form, it's like this. Again, waistline, one leg down, the other leg's like forward, and then arm comes out, back in, and then this one's down. Okay? That stick figure kind of looks like he's hurting. Starting the female figure. I'm going to draw this exact backbone. The stick figure actually can be very helpful for drawing the frame of your figure, okay? But now, instead of putting my arms there, I need to draw that hourglass figure first, and then I can go ahead and draw my elbow. I mean, sorry, I can draw my shoulder and then I know my elbow is going to be right here, but it's going to be up a little. Then my wrist will be here. And then my hand. Again, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and then hanging hand. Now, hip, hip, knee, knee, like that.
Again, if you really want to get good at human bodies, start studying anatomy. Therefore, you'll know um, things like the calf muscle and how the bicep goes, how we have this muscle up here on top of the shoulder and things like that, as well as where do bones protrude, depending on how much uh, fat you have or how little you have. So again, there we go. Now, taking it a step further, you can use the same recipe for making anything. So we can go ahead and make a really skinny tall guy skinny and tall or just skinny I guess okay so again then I'm gonna make my trapezoid really thin I'm gonna make my my shoulder joints smaller still halfway still to the waist which ultimately means that my hip bone my hip area is gonna be extremely tiny. Oh, this is painfully tiny. He's got some calf muscle. Why don't give him that? Okay, and then small feet. Or, or we can do 180 and make a shorter fat man. Now, if I make him short, know that I went down this much, I need to go up this much. So then here's where his feet are gonna be. Now, he's gonna have his shoulder width, and instead of just doing a torso, we're going to, oh, actually halfway changes. So then halfway's right here. I'm gonna make him a little bit more chunky. So it's more like a square, but with rounded sides. We then do our hip bones, which have to cover the whole waistline. And then our feet and our feet, our knees, our large shoulders. And now notice how his elbows are going to be very short. They start to take on with this recipe they start to take on the characteristics that you're aiming for okay if it's a bigger man shorter they're gonna have shorter arms because you're measuring out proportionately big old calf muscles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there you go so, another thing lots of people want to learn is the face. And so we go from this kind of face to a realistic face. And when people say realistic face, they get all scared, they get nervous, because they don't want to offend anybody by making their face look not like their face. But if you can proportionately lay out a face, draw eyes, nose, and mouth, you have taken a very large step from this. Now, going from this to the proportions of a face, always start or eyes start with a circle. Again, we're going very generic, okay? Depending on what kind of facial structure you're doing, you can just do the very basic chin. Okay, then what you're gonna do, oh, sorry, I have to run that out a little bit more, is you're gonna draw a line straight down the middle. You want to split the head in half lengthwise, sorry, Yep, lengthwise and widthwise. So that should be half. Now, 
You may look at this and be like, no, this isn't real. But the eyes go on this midline, okay? You're thinking that's a huge forehead, but it's actually the forehead and the top of the head. And don't worry, hair will cover that. Now, the eyes go on this midline, but eyes are about a fifth of the distance between here and here, which means you can fit an eye length in between both eyes and from the end of the eye to the side of the head. So we're just gonna kind of eyeball it. <laughs> Get it, eyeball it. All right, and now we have one fifth, so on, so forth, okay? Sorry, I'll erase that guy. Then of course the eye, you can do the basic eye almond shape, okay? That can look like this. You can do a trapezoidal shape uh, to make it more of a manly eye. You can make it a cat eye, which goes up and then up. And then, I mean, up and then flat, and then swoops upward, okay? Also, eyes do not look like this, okay? Our iris covers the whole thing in all of these okay and to be looking straight at you it needs to just touch the bottom of the eye just like that okay so whatever eye you want to do doesn't matter just as long as the proportions are correct. Now, try and make them as closely related as possible. Again, touches the top and the bottom of it. Okay, now, halfway between the center of the face and the bottom, which would be a fourth of the whole head, is where the bottom of the nose is. Now, when you're looking on front, a lot of people like to draw triangles for the nose. Just do the edges. And what that means is just do the outline of the nose, maybe if they have a rounded nose like that, and then maybe one edge, okay? Now, the mouth, from the midline to the bottom, the mouth is two thirds of the way down. Okay? So that's one third, two thirds, three thirds. So the mouth is like right here. Also, the mouth comes straight down from the middle of the eye. So this is where I know my mouth is going to end. So I'm going to draw the center line of my of the lips. Do the upper lip and then the bottom lip. Now, this is just how I do the bottom lip. I don't connect it, but you can certainly go ahead and do that. It's not wrong, it's not right. Now, looking at that, you can be like, "Oh, yes, the face of the shape of this head is pretty spot on." Or you can be like, no, their chin's a little bigger, or they have more of a square face, okay? Okay, also, the neck is not super skinny. It doesn't do that. It actually comes right down from the inside, probably right at the ends of the eyes. Eyebrows, so. Lots of people don't, you know, they just kind of do this sort of thing. But eyebrows, the natural shape of eyebrows is when at the end of the iris, it actually starts to curve down. So then we have, it comes up or it goes flat like that. And then again, at the end of the iris, it starts to go down. Same with this side, at the end of the iris. And then down. 
you can curve it a little bit more to make it feel like they're not so angular of eyebrows depending on how their eyebrow shape is. Now, because this kind of looks like a really weird freaky person, I'm just gonna put the pupil in here. And I like to put a little shine in there by just adding like a little bubble. Now, if you start getting into details, we have the eyelid, which sometimes, depending on the person, can be all the way above, or it could just be a little sliver. Depends on, again, the person and how their body is shaped. Now, the hair. The hairline on all humans, well, most humans, goes up, over, unless you have a widow's peak, then it comes down like this, and then comes down, okay? So we know all hair is gonna come from that shape. So my hair has a cowlick right here, so what happens is it kinda swoops and comes down like that, okay? But a lot of um, hairstyles can have it coming straight up, but notice how I'm starting on that line and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this into a male where his hair is all spiky in front and he's got a cowlick right here. And then it's going to come down like this. Now our ears, and this may sound weird again, start where our eyeballs start and end at the bottom of the nose. Okay, just like that. Now. Again, this isn't a recipe to make everybody's face correct. It's to make a proportionately correct face. So, again, just as a review, split the uh, head in half. Lengthwise, widthwise, your eyes go on the center line. Halfway down from the center line in the chin is the nose. A third of the way down from the center, I mean two thirds of the way down from the center line the chin is the mouth and remember the mouth goes just as wide as the inside of I mean as the middle of the iris okay and then your eyebrows really go straight until they hit the outside of the iris and then they curve down the ears go from the center line or where the eyes are to the bottom of the nose halfway down or a fourth of the way down your face and that's really the basic proportions of the human face. Now, putting those two pieces together, I'm going to draw two stick figures and two examples um, in odd poses, and then I'm going to equate it into the proportions and the little recipe that I have explained to you guys. So let's do a, hmm, let's do, Um, maybe let's do a dancer it's like this and then she's all like ooh look at me okay and then maybe um, a guy that oh the a guy that looks sad he's like oh with his hands in his pockets. He's like, uh, I'm sad. Okay, now, here we go. Again, we start with the head. Then we draw the basic body shape. The dancer is gonna be a female. And again, you can make her as skinny or as large as you want. It just depends on how big you make this shape. Okay, I have hip number one, hip number two. Okay, I have a knee because remember it's right here. And then I have her foot, which would be right here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have her on her tiptoe, okay? Now I have her other knee over here. 
So then that, I'm gonna just use that reference right there to have her knee right here and then her ankle right here and then just like that. Now, I'm then going to have shoulder, shoulder, let's actually just save space so I can fit both of them in there. This is gonna go like this. So then shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand. Now, go ahead, go to the knee. We can go ahead and give her a little bit of calf. I'm gonna go around the hip joint like this. Then we have our foot. We have our arm now. There we go. That's our basic dancer shape. Now let's move to him. Again, he's got his head like this. We can go ahead and draw that backbone. Okay, nothing wrong with that. So then we're gonna have him, he's kind of sideways actually. So we're gonna have it come in like this. No, oh, he looks so sad. There he is. Actually, I'm gonna make his head a little bit bigger. Another big tip is I don't do it because you can see my uh, my erase lines, but you'll see it in my next drawing. The big key is to draw light until you get it right. Um, it'll really save your eraser, it'll save your paper, and it will look nicer. So then, got his elbow out here, his wrist, and then his hand is gonna be in his pocket. And then actually, let's have his elbow here, his wrist, and then his hand will be in his pocket. Now, again, I'm gonna connect the dots. Maybe he's got some baggy pants, because he's that kind of guy. Okay, then, Go ahead and just put his hand right in his pocket. Oh, I got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. And there we go. And there he is, our little gloomy guy. Now, our faces. We go ahead and cut in half and in half. Remember, fifth, the eye is a fifth of the length, then our nose, our mouth. I want to give her more of a chin. Her eyebrows, her ears, and then I'm going to put her hair up in a bun, just like that. Ta -da. And then she's gonna have a little dance thing on and then we're gonna go ahead and erase all these extra lines in here. As you practice this, you'll learn that you can curve out certain lines, um, soften up the edges like this. So I should do that, like that, right there. Like that, okay, and then again, this guy's face is kind of sideways, but it still is the same 
recipe. So split the face in half, he's facing this way, and then split the face in half, okay? Again, his nose is gonna be here. Come like this, his eyes will be a fifth of the way. Eyebrow. And his face kind of swoops in before it's time, so I'm going to figure that out. Oh, he's gonna look more disappointed. And then again, the ear goes from the eye to the nose. And then he's got shaggy hair. Oh, poor guy. Just like that. Here's his little t-shirt. Kind of looks like a Lego man because of his torso. Okay. That's the basic turning your stick figure into a more realistic humanization. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to draw for you um, my favorite subject for humans is fighting poses. And I'm gonna draw that, I'm gonna do a time lapse so you guys can see I start from this basic skeleton. And then I will use these recipes and then time, detail, and just a little bit of finesse, and you can make an awesome picture. Thank you all so much for watching. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see, please comment below. Like if you believe this could help improve your drawing or you could use this. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. I'm Lazeal and I'll see you next week.